Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and for those of you who do not subscribe, I am a lock picker and I am a lock collector. When I went into my local DIY store, which in the UK that's um, B and Q, I found a range of locks I was not familiar with. This is uh, a company or a brand called Smith and Lock. Now, this seems to be a replacement of the range of budget locks found in B&Q, which were the Dial brand. So this seems to have replaced those, at least in my local store. I thought I'd buy a range which cuts across their entire selection of Smith & Lock padlocks and do a consumer review of them. So, first things first, what do you get for your money? Well, the most expensive padlock here is this 50mm aluminium bodied hardened steel shackle padlock which comes in at £9.97 as of the DIY.com website today. I know that you can also buy these through uh, screwfix.com as well. The second most expensive lock is this 50 uh, millimeter laminated steel padlock and this comes in at £7.47. The brass closed shackle 50 mil padlock, £6.25. The laminated 40 mil padlock at uh, £5.98. And the brass, little brass padlock here, comes in at £4.48. So overall, I would say that you appear to get a relatively budget price for these types of lock. But as we know, we often get what we pay for. So let's explore these locks a little bit more and see what they're like. So um, I've had a look through these and in terms of their general look and construction, they actually seem to be quite well finished. So in terms of aesthetics, they do appear quite nice. And I know it's not important, but the uh, branding and the packaging, again, it looks like it's um, a step up from the previous sort of budget range that B&Q were offering or DIY.com were offering. So in terms of aesthetics and appeal, I certainly think that they are, you know, providing a, a product which may catch your eye in the aisles for, as we just ascertained, a reasonable price. I'm a lock picker though. So whilst it's all well and good looking at these locks in the aspects of, you know, appeal in terms of their visual nature and their cost. Let's have a look at their pick resistance. So let's start at the bottom end here and have a bit of a look at this laminated steel padlock. It looks very much like all the other laminated steel padlocks you can get out of there are made in China. The only thing which is concerning me at the moment is that looking down the keyway I can see that there appears to be, instead of metal on the inside, plastic. That is a bit of a warning sign. If it is plastic, and I will go away and destroy this lock later and show you, if it is plastic, then that is a serious security flaw because, of course, it can be melted. Okay, ignoring that for one second, let's throw in a pick and see what these locks offer up for us. It's a little, feels like a little four pin lock. Into a false set, which appears that it has some form of um, anti pick pins or pick resistant pins. If you are into your lock picking, you will know them as spool pins or mushroom pins, depending on the type that's in there. Hopefully we will find out later. This lock I actually bought cheap because um, somebody had already taken the keys out or the keys have been lost from the back. The keys are held in at the back, which I don't think is particularly great on these types of packets. Okay, so very cheap lock. So I wasn't surprised that I could get in there very quickly. Okay, let's put that to one side. Let's go up to the more expensive 50 mil version. Let's see if we can have a little pick of this. Oh, 
seem to be again in a bit of a full set, which means that I think there are anti pick pins in here. And we're open. Okay. So um, I do think that there are spool pins in here. Let's have a look. Or oh, anti pick pins or pick resistant pins in here. Let's have a look here. So. Um, Mm, looking down there, it looks again like we have plastic internals on this, even the more expensive one, which is a bit worrying. Uh, looking down here, the shackles are held in by, yep, uh, a latch which could easily be shimmed, which is a bypass attack uh, by which you can force the locking pole back into the lock um, using some special tools which will open the shackles. So, uh, it doesn't have an awful lot of protection around the shackle either. If you if you look here, there's lots of play. So we're not talking very tight tolerances around the shackle, which would mean that it's uh, definitely vulnerable to an attack at the shackle. Um, it is hardened steel. I do trust that. And overall, the construction seems pretty solid. But the sloppy tolerances um, at the shackle and the possible plastic internals do make me a bit suspicious of this. Um, I am surprised that it does have anti-pick or pick resistant pins inside. I think that's actually quite a good feature. I'll reserve judgment until a bit later. Let's carry on through our journey. We'll get the easy ones first. Okay. So this is a different style key on this one. Again, I haven't actually opened the keys on these. And this is a Yale style keyway, very, very common. Um, and I imagine it's a five pin lock. Like the others, I'd expect that this one, this closed shackle padlock to have anti-pick pins. And I'm just going to go through and see if that's true. Picking the pins as I go along. And looks like I've got one more pin to pick, or a couple more maybe. Now we're open. Okay. So this one is one of the more expensive ones, six pounds twenty-five, and it, the closed shackle, the shrouded shackle, does protect from the shims, which you can use down the. Uh, side of the shackle to, to push back the locking poles, which again could be exploited, but certainly this protects it. And it protects it against uh, twisting attacks and also cutting attacks. So if you've got this on a hasp of some kind, it limits the range that you can get in there to cut it. Overall, um, I quite like the feel of this one. And with the, the anti-pick pins, I'd certainly say that this is very much middle tier for this type of lock. I think at £6.25, this one actually offers reasonable value. Okay, so I think we need to remove the packaging on these two and have a look inside those. So first things first, the first key we've actually seen, and this appears to have quite good bitting. If you look here, you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five pins and some very high bitting, lots of highs and lows. That makes it a little trickier to pick. Um, very smooth, not very tight tolerances around the shackle again, so it might be um, uh, fall to a shim attack, but however, when you're buying a lock this cheap, you're not probably looking for something that's going to guard a high security application. So I don't think we need to worry about that over duly. So let's grab, um, again, some picking tools and have a look at this lock and see how it fares.
are open. Okay, strangely, this one actually offered a reasonable amount of picking protection. And I'd say for this type of lock, it's not bad for the price. A little lock for £4.48 like this, as long as you're not locking up something too expensive, um, it's very much a standard type of brass padlock. There's many like it out there, but this one isn't a bad version for the price. But, you know, I would only be locking up stuff which um, I wasn't, didn't have a very high value. Okay, on to the last lock. Let's move that away. Here we go. And this is the most expensive one. And again, quite good bitting. We have one, two, three, four, five, six pin core, which might explain the higher price. The more pins you have, the higher the security. Now, aluminium is not um, particularly strong in some aspects, but it is also light and durable and resists corrosion quite well. Uh, the tolerances around the shackle again are quite poor, which means it is vulnerable to a shim attack but the shackle is a lot thicker on this lock and overall aesthetically very nice. This is the most expensive at almost 10 pounds, but it does have a six pin core. Can we pick it? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Again, we appear to have some security pins in and we're open. So um, it does have security pins in or uh, anti-pick pins or pick resistant pins, which I suppose is actually a good thing. And whilst I did get into that one quite quickly, I wouldn't say that this is a terrible lock. It's actually for the price, not too shabby. It's hard to get a aluminium bodied lock that looks quite as nice as this with a hardened seal shackle for around that money. However, again, with all the range, all the locks we picked, I just could not see you use these in a application where you need to lock anything up of high value. And actually you can see here where the, can you see there? This is where the plugs are for the pin stacks. So that's how you, they assemble it. So that's what these little dots are on the side if you were wondering. Okay. So uh, before I give my conclusions of the range so far, let's go back to this lock, which didn't have any keys anyway. And I'm going to grind this base plate off for you using um, just a standard grinder. And we'll see what's inside. Is it plastic? Do we need to worry about this? Okay, I'll be back in a minute. So we are back and um, I ground off the little tips and I, use a, a punch to punch the pins down, took off the top steel laminate and I found that, yep, as I suspected, we had a plastic interior. Why is that bad? Well, uh, there are attacks where people use jet lighters to melt the insides of the lock open. Um, also, plastic doesn't wear as well as metal does and it's a whole lot cheaper. The worst thing is, of course, you wouldn't know unless you knew what to look for. And if you look down inside this lock body as well, the 50 mil version, you can also see it contains the same material. So just be aware if you are buying uh, these laminated padlocks to look down the inside and see whether you are buying a full metal core or a partially plastic core. I might be able to show you now some of those um, security pins which are in here, which I think is a really good thing. Uh, it's rare to find security pins in locks which are really this price range. But let's have a little look if I can't just push the core out. And we can see that again, another way to save money is to skeletonize the core. That's what these cuts are for, it makes it a bit lighter. I can tip the pins out so you can see that these are just standard key pins, nothing really to worry about there. What we're interested in is the driver pins, the ones which provide most of the security in terms of the pins. 
and let's uh, just have a quick look at what we get. So, yep, we have here a security pin, which is a spool pin in pin one, pin chamber one, spool pin in pin chamber two, and three and four. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the internals of locks, this is actually a good feature to have. They provide pick resistance. So if you are, um, you know, a beginner lock picker, you may find these to be a bit tricky and it does prevent some resistance against bumping attacks and raking attacks. Um, so in conclusion, I think at the price range, the locks which are not laminated, so these ones, they are not too bad in comparison to locks of a similar price from manufacturers that are their peers, but they are a step down from manufacturers such as Yale. Um, however, they are also quite cheap. I would say in the right setting, as long as you weren't locking up something of great value, then I don't think that these locks here, the aluminium body, the closed shackle, and the small brass padlock, and their similar um, friends in the Smith & Lock range are bad padlocks. I think that they are okay, rudimentary. The best out of the ones in front of you is probably the closed shackle padlock, just because it has a closed shackle and prevents shimming. In terms of the laminated padlocks, I would probably advise that you give them a miss if you're going to lock anything up of value purely because they are open to all sorts of picking, shimming and melting attacks. However, you might find the right application for these for the price point. Uh, but please, whatever you do, go in with the right knowledge. In terms of cost versus security, well, I am not a security expert, I am not a locksmith, and I would always, always, always say that you should consult somebody who is a professional security expert or a locksmith to get their advice on what is the appropriate level of security for the application you're using. And this is the key. Don't go for a bargain, go for the right level of security for the application. Now, I know we're all on a budget, but clearly, there's no point in spending money on things which are completely inappropriate for their purpose because um, it will give you the false sense of security. Well, I hope you found that an informative review. Um, I hope you were surprised as I was regarding the fact that these padlocks have plastic internals. And thank you for watching.